Hello everyone, this is Latia for you, coming today with another scripture from the Lord. Um, let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Father God, thank you for your word. It is a treasure to us. It is a rose to us. It is blossoming in us and we are full of it, God. We love you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you that we can chew on your word and get something new every single day, God. You give us every nutrient that we need from your word. You give us everything we need, God. You are our father. You are our provider. You provide for us. You keep us. Continue to keep us under the shadow of your wings, Lord. We give you glory and honor and praise because only you deserve the praise. Only you deserve the glory and the honor. You are God alone. No one can be compared to you. We love you. We give you praise and glory, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, speak to your people. Amen. All right. You guys, we are going to be in Psalms 91 today. The Lord made it very clear what he wanted me to teach y'all. And I was in the shower and I said, well, what am I talking about today, Lord? And he said 911. And I know 911. Whenever I hear that, that's Psalms 91. So verse one, start there. So yeah, this is what he led me to teach on today. So we're going to go from Psalms 91 verses 1 through 5 today. All right. So oh, I hope you all are having a great day today. Gonna have a great evening in the word. All right. So um, the first part, verse 1. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. It kind of lets you know what dwells kind of means in that sentence already. Like before you even look it up in the Strongs, you know that it means to abide, right? To make your abode, to be still there, to stay right? Why? Because abide comes next. It says, he who dwells will abide. That's, that's what a person who dwells is going to do. It's, it's about a process of staying there. It's about getting there and then staying there. He who dwells makes his occupation and just, it's not just being there and just being still, but it's making your movement, your being, your essence in God, in Christ, right? You are staying with him. You live with him. You make your home in him, right? Or do you just vi- or do you just visit God when you need him? Do you just come to him when when you're in need of something? He wants us to dwell with him. He wants us to live in him, to love him and abide in him. He has everything we need. And I mean, it makes it very clear, even in Revelation, as one of the rewards, it was that you would be a pillar in the house and no more leave or go out, but only, you know, be in. And this was a good thing, right? So we don't know all the capacity, all of the more than we can ask or think, you know, part of this. All we know is that he says, if we dwell, he who dwells in the shelter, the covering, the the dwelling place of God, the most high, he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will abide in the shadow of the almighty. What is the shadow of the almighty? It's the covering. It's, it's the, the, the actually If you look up that word in the Strong's, it implies almost like disguised or hidden away, right? You can be in plain sight and be hidden away in the Almighty. I love to be hidden away. You think you see me. You think you know me. You think you know all about me, but you don't realize there's nothing you can do that can truly touch me. You can even take my body but God has me in his shadow. 
I'm in the shadow of the Almighty. I'm under his true protection. I'm under his true guidance. Why? Because I'm dwelling. I'm abiding in his shelter. When you think of a shelter, it's a covering from the outside elements. It's a covering from exposure. It's a covering from the storm of life. What are you going through right now in your life that you need a covering? from it could be a person it could be a place it could be a thing but no matter what it is if you have a shelter then you can abide in under it and if you have a shelter you can dwell underneath it and if God is your shelter who can stand against God he who dwells in the shelter of the most high he is the most high. There is no one higher than the most high. Who can top that when your shelter is the most high? Glory be to God. That means no one can beat him. No one can go higher than him. No one can abscond him. No one can, can take his throne. He is the most high. And it says, he who dwells in the shelter of the most high, God's covering, the most high covering, most high's covering, will abide in the shadow of the almighty. Don't you want to be in his shadow? I love to think of sometimes as I'm praying or if I'm going through something, think of myself as like a little child, sometimes hiding behind the skirts of your father right? If your father has on this long robe or something and, and you wrap yourself in it, my children do that. Sometimes if I wear a long robe, they'll come under my robe and, and they'll cover themselves as if they're walking in the robe or hide underneath the robe, right? Because that's how we are to him. We are his children. We can hide behind his leg. We can hide in his shadow, when we're facing the storms of life, we don't have to let those things get in us. He can be the shelter. Amen. He can hide us. Thank you, Lord. Verse two, I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. These are words of adoration to the king, to your king to your father, to your God. This person is saying, I will say, I think it's his David, right? Yeah. I will say to the Lord, my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. You're speaking these words. You're letting him know that you run to no one but him. Your hiding place is no one but him. He is your fortress. When you think of a fortress, you think of a fort, right? A fort, uh, uh, um, a, a stronghold, a something that is very strong, that has defenses, that has walls, uh, a fortress, uh, um, an area, a protected area. I, I think of like a stoned in area, right? A, a, a stronghold, an area that is protected and keeps something inside that's sacred, right? So when you say my refuge, my fortress, you think of running into him, right? You think of going in and seeking shelter. And in this, this portion, this statement, he's saying, you are my refuge. And my fortress, my God, meaning I worship no one else but you. You are my God personally, right? For me, my God, in whom I trust. And, and this almost implies total trust, right? My God in whom I trust, like there is no one else that I can trust in but you because you are my refuge and my fortress. It says, I will say to the Lord, my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Just imagine yourself right now, wrapping your arms around the true and living God, around Jesus, around your father, 
and, and calling him what he is. You're calling him, you're bathing him in your love. Your love is calling him your refuge. You're making it personal. He's not a refuge. He's my refuge. You are my refuge. There is no one else that I can go to and find peace and find refuge and find safety. You are my refuge my place away from the world, my hiding spot, and my fortress, meaning my protection, the walls that surround me. Your arm is like a shield around me. It's like walls around me. You're calling him these things. Call him these things. My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. He loves it when you put your trust in him. He loves you when you acknowledge. He loves it when you acknowledge him as your God. You are my God. Amen. You are my God, Lord, in whom I trust. When you say these things, you're saying them to him as a worship in words of adoration, acknowledging him for being the almighty and most high God. All right, let's move to verse three. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Okay, so Um, This part actually reminds me of a dream, one part of a dream that I had. And um, every time I see this verse, it just makes me think of that dream. I was dreaming that I was in South America. I want to say, I feel like I was in Argentina or somewhere. And I was speaking to this woman and she was confiding in me and crying, talking about her sons um, wanting to join a gang. And she was just so sad and she wanted to know what to do. And And I realized that there was a stronghold in the house that she lived in. I was doing some kind of missionary work or something in this dream. And so um, I realized there was a stronghold. There was a demon in her house. And so I quickly turned around. But instead of truly listening, and I know God was just teaching me a lesson in this dream, to not just go by my discernment, but to use wisdom here, using the Holy Spirit to both discern and also to apply discernment, to apply his wisdom and his knowledge in what to do. So what I probably should have done is start calling the demon out, but instead um, I was on his territory and I was walking around looking for him with the authority that I have. I should have been calling him out. So Anyway, I turned around and I'm searching for this demon and I knew exactly where he was. And as I got closer to him, I could feel his presence. And I knew at some point he was going to either jump out at me or something was going to happen. And I kept thinking he's going to come out at any second. And I like, I just could almost snap and know exactly when he was going to jump out. But instead of me knowing that exact moment when he was going to jump out, I actually stepped into his trap because I was getting closer to him, walking closer to him. And I stepped out and um, I stepped into some sort of falling floor thing. I don't know it. The floor just completely gave way and I fell into this hole and I was going down this hole. And then all of a sudden the hole turned into a slide like a kid slide and I never forget that because even in my mistakes my God is my fortress he is my refuge I don't have to fear why because I'm on God's side right I can't lose he can't lose so therefore I can't lose and that's what he was showing me in this dream there are better ways to go about doing things and using the wisdom of God in application not just knowing that you are you know who you are, but also use the wisdom, not just the discernment. So yeah, he was trying to show me that in the dream. And yeah, it was just such a wonderful dream because when I tell you this slide was like amazing, like it turned into this like kitty slide and I was going, as I was sliding down this slide. So anyway, that kind of goes with the last teaching that we were talking about, about God working all things together for our good. And he's going to work that out. Even when we make mistakes, he works it out, right? Because we're on his team, we're working for him. So 
Anyway, so verse three, it says, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Yes, the enemy may lay a trap for you. Yes, you may actually even fall for it, which we're speaking against that in the name of Jesus, that you're not going to, and you're going to use wisdom and discernment. But it says that God is going to deliver you. He will deliver you for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Remember, we're talking about two parallel existences, just like we were talking about yesterday. We're, we're wrestling not against flesh and blood. Yes, there is a, a physical dimension that you live in, but there's also a spiritual dimension. Those two dimensions collide every day. And if you don't uh, acknowledge the one, you can never be, I'm sorry, you can never be triumphant in in what you are, what you're going through. You can, because you, you're not even acknowledging the other side of what's going on, right? So it says, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. This is acknowledging that there is something going on, right? There is a, another realm that is going on. Yes, you are abiding. Yes, you are finding refuge. Yes, he is your fortress. Yes, in him you will trust. But the enemy is still in operation. He is still trying his best, right? But you're making God your dwelling place. Therefore, verse three, he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. There is no clause in this. There is no but. There is no except when da 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 da. No, it says for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Who is he talking about? Those who are dwelling in the shelter of the most high. Those who are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, those who are finding God as their refuge and their fortress in Him who they trust, they're calling Him God. Those people are the ones He's just going to deliver them from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. And if you believe this, if you have the faith to believe His word, then you are one of them. Amen. He he is he is a good guy. He's not going to withhold any good thing from you. But so many people are convinced by the whispers of the enemy telling them this isn't true for you. Look at you. You're failing over here. You're failing over there. This isn't true for you. You don't abide. Blah 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 blah. The fact that you're even listening to a teaching means you seek to abide. You seek to dwell in the shelter. All you have to do is just call on the Lord call him your God, call him your refuge, call him your trust, right? Because he is God and he hears our hearts. He judges our hearts. He, he sees us and he knows what we're going through. He wants to be there. He wants to catch us when we're falling. But your hope in his word, his word is filled with hope, but don't be convinced by the enemy's number one tactic. Remember, we talked about knowing your enemy, right? Don't be convinced. That's the easy one that we should be able to kick to the side, right? The enemy convincing us that this word is not for us. No, no, no. His word is right. And it's good for teaching and edification. It is good for me. It is for me. God is for me. Psalm 91 is perfect for that because it lets you know how God is just for you. He loves you. He seeks to love on you and protect you. Amen. He didn't say that the fowler would never come. He didn't say that pestilence would never come. He said that he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. In that dream, I fell right through the floor. I fell right for that trap, but he delivered me. He didn't say it wouldn't come. He said he will deliver you. And sometimes that takes time. Sometimes it, it may take a moment for him to deliver you, but you must put your hope and your trust in God. He is your refuge and your fortress. He is your God in whom you trust. Therefore, he is going to deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from deadly pestilence. Let me read again, or we are going to read verse two and three again. I will say to the Lord, my refuge, my fortress, 
my God in whom I trust. Verse three, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Verse four, he will cover you with his pinions and under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. He will cover you with his pinions. That's the, the feathers of his wings. He will cover you with his pinions. And under his wings, you will find refuge. So we were already calling him our refuge. We were calling him our fortress, right? But this is describing, this is, I feel like this part is a description of the fact that he's not only covering you, but that he's covering you with love. He's covering you with gentleness, with peacefulness. These things that are the fruit of the spirit for us, he's showing you that he is these things. He is love. He is gentle. A feather is soft. A feather is comforting, right? A feather is something you want to touch your skin. A feather is something that you want close to you. A feather is something, feathers and pinions, these are things that that will, will gather you, right? Like a, a bird gathers its chicks, right? He, he gets you close and he makes you warm and he protects you and he's your covering. You're under his wing. You can find refuge, meaning like away from the storms of life, away from the exposure to the elements, away from your boss, away from someone who might be harming you or trying to attack you or that's constantly at you away from this horribly annoying situation. He is your refuge. He is the place that you can go, your quiet place, right? The closeness to him. He can bring you and gather you close to him. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. His faithfulness. He is faithful. When you think of faithful, um, you think of married, or at least I do. I think of married. As a matter of fact, one of the translations of one of these words is marriage. Um, I want to say it's abiding, one of the abide words or dwells, it's either under dwell or abide, that if you look in the Strong's under, under one of the translations, it talks about marriage. And I just thought that that was so cool because it's like he's married to you. He, he is in covenant relationship with you, right? He, he is obligated in love, right? He's not just obligated because he's obligated and he's your father. He's obligated out of love and, and he wants to take care of you. He wants to be your benefactor. He wants to be your provider, right? He will cover you with his pinions. And, and you know, one of the things that I feel like God sometimes wants to translate to us is that it doesn't always have to look like what the world considers taking care of. He's going to give you revelation of what taking care of you means, right? Yes, you, he, he, he does shower you with good things, right? He's going to shower you with, with beautiful things. But, but sometimes caring starts from within. Caring is peace. Caring is being able to be in a storm in your life, a, a, a clenching um, something like a vice grip and yet having peace. That's true caring. That's, that's where caring starts. When you can give me peace and I can sleep at night, knowing that I'm going to have to deal with all these things tomorrow again, that's peace. And that's covering. That is a fortress. That is a refuge. He is a great God. He will cover you with his pinions. Under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler, meaning he is dependable, right? We know the, uh, we have the shield of faith, 
right? So our belief in God is, is how we are saved. We believe on Jesus. We believe he died on the cross and rose again for our sins. And we accept him as our Lord, right? And that faith is a shield in his faithfulness, meaning, meaning his consistency, his, his always, he's always there, right? He is faithful. He is true. He's not going to leave us. He's not like us, right? Wishy-washy. He's not like us where sometimes we might be down for it, but then when you're not feeling good, I can't. mm -mm. No, he's not like that his faithfulness is a shield and you want his kind of shield you want his kind of faithfulness why because it doesn't end he doesn't just drop the shield when he's tired and he says oh you mm -mm, I'm tired of you because you did this over here and you did that over there right no his shield is is his faithfulness his consistency his diligence he holds it up in faithfulness. It is a shield. It blocks for you, right? And, and a buckler. And his faithfulness is a shield and buckler. So remember, we talked about buckler yesterday. You know, buckler being the ability to be led, right? By the spirit, the ability to be, to be guided, the ability to move freely, Remember when you gird your loins, you, you, you would take the extra cloth and you would wrap it around your legs and you would stuff it through that belt, right? Or that buckler. So, so that keeps you held together, firmness, surety, the inability to lose your bearings, the inability to lose your stuff, right? To, to lose your scruples. You're held together with a buckler. And who is this buckler? This buckler is God. He is faithful. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. He's keeping you together, even in the midst of what you go through, even in the midst of facing these problems and these things that are consistently trying to come at you. He is faithful. He is a shield and a buckler. I'm going to go to verse five. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. You know, fear is a mind thing, right? Because you can be afraid of something that's not even there, right? You can be afraid of something and the enemy can totally convince you of something and it's not even real. Right. So we're going to speak that he's not going to convince you because you're not going to be full from this point on. But that's how he works. Right. You will not fear. Fear is not of God. You will not fear the terror of the night. It didn't say that the terror of the night will never come. Right. It says that you will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. It didn't say that the arrow would not come. It says that you would not fear it. Amen. So they're going to come at you. The enemy is going to try to intimidate you with what you see. The enemy is going to try to intimidate you with what you feel, but you must walk in authority. You must walk knowing that he is your shield and buckler. You must not be afraid. You must not operate in fear. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. He is with you. He is watching over you, his baby, his child. He's holding you close. I like to sing this one song to the Lord. It's by Jamie Grace. Um, I want to say it's called Love You Back. And it just talks about finally getting to love God back the way he deserves. And um, I just love the part about, um, oh, I'm thinking of a different song now. No, that's a different one. Um, the one by, oh goodness, um, the family, it is uh, Forever Jones. That's what it is. Okay, and it, and it talks about, 
God knowing you from your first heartbeat, right? So he he knew you and he was he was an expectant father of you, right? He knew when his baby's first heartbeat, he started the boo-boo, right? He, he was right there and he wanted to see it. He loves it right? And he watches you and your little skinny legs when you were born crying and kicking, right? He loves you. He's an expectant father. He wants to keep you. He wants to watch over you. He doesn't want you to live in fear. He doesn't want you to be afraid of the things that you see during the day. He, If he sees you the moment your first heartbeat all the way to the, your death, it's as precious in his eyes as the death of his saints. He's watching. He is ready to take that ruach right back into himself, right? He's right there to hold his child. It says, you will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. This is for your life. This is for your lifetime. It did not say that it would not come. It says that you will not fear fear. Amen. All right, you guys, this is it. This is the last verse we're going to do today. And God is just so amazing. I am praying for you guys. I am hoping for you guys. I love you. And I hope to see you in the clouds if I don't see you next time. And also let's go ahead and pray. Father God, bless your people watch over them tonight as they sleep sing over them the way you love them god sing beautiful words of blessing and overflow towards them jesus they are your babies and only you truly understand that we give you glory we give you honor we give you praise 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 to god almighty the most high king we love you father we love you, Abba. You are everything to us. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And if you like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, just repeat these words after me. But more than repeating them, believe them with your whole heart. And if you don't know how to do that, ask God to help you believe it with your whole heart. He gives us all a measure of faith. So, so take that in and take these words in and believe them with your whole heart. Father God, Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Lord, I believe you are the Son of God, Jesus. I believe you bled and you died. And I believe that God raised you from the dead on the third day. I believe in you. Lord God, I have led myself long enough. I have sinned long enough. I've gone on my own long enough. I ask you to come and sit on the throne of my heart. Lead me. Be my Lord. Be my savior. Forgive me of my sins. Pour your blood on my sins, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you believe that, I know God is washing you clean. He is sealing you up in his Holy Spirit. And, and just ask the Holy Spirit to come into you, to abide in you. He's going to lead you and guide you into all truth. He's going to bring you to a new church home. He's going to tell you where you should go to fellowship with other believers and how to stay sharpened with them. And then go and be baptized in Jesus' name. It is a part of what God, what Jesus wanted us to do. So go out, make disciples of all men. You have every right and privilege as other believers now that you believe. Amen. So God has a will set up for you. You have received eternal life tonight if you have believed, but just know that he has a will for you. He has things that he wants you to do, things that he wants you to walk out so that he can reward you greatly in eternity. So just walk out his will day by day. And one of the best things that you can do to start that process is talk to him every day. 
Make time for him every day. Sit with him every day and let him know your heart. Talk to him. Small talk can lead to great talk with God. So, all right, you guys, I love you. I hope you all are doing well. And just continue to abide in Christ and pray for me. And I am praying for you. Remember, you can leave your prayer request below in the description box in the comments. I mean, and I'm praying for you guys. All right, take care. Bye.